All right, here we are, game two between Princeton High Tigers and East Chapel Hill High School. Princeton High, they've got a one nothing lead in this best of three in the high school Star League winter season 2016 playoffs. So we get right on into this draft beforehand. I have been corrected on my name saying it is not S Max, it's Smacks. So, apologies, Smacks. And uh, let's get into this draft. Warlock Invoker, Darkseer, Marana, banned out by Princeton High Tigers, East Chapel Hill High School. They banned out the Naga, Shadow Demon, Centaur again, as well as the Ursa this time around. They've picked up Void, they've picked up Witch Doctor, and they've picked up Venge. So they're looking for some combinations. Witch Doctor ult with the Void Chronosphere is always nice. You want to have the Venge to swap out of the Lasso. Batrider, Ogre, Magi, it's an okay combination. Fire Blast, Lasso. Can be used pretty well in tandem. And uh, let's see what Princeton High Tigers go to next. They've got their offlane, and for East Chapel Hill, they've picked up their offlaner, if that's not a position one, uh, Void. And Princeton High, let's see. They could go back to the Sniper, but not too sure they want to go that route uh, with a Void on the board. Maybe that's something East Chapel Hill want to go with. Sniper, Dragonlance, anybody who really gets a Dragonlance can do uh, pretty swell. With a Chronosphere, get yourself a Clink's, Clink's Dragonlance, Clink's Medallion Dragonlance. It's a solid combination with a Void. Then you can pick up the Sniper. Razor is not bad. Omni Slash in the uh, Chronosphere. But uh, Rubik gets picked up. Rubik, Ogre, Magi, your two supports again for Princeton High. And then uh, for East Chapel Hill. Void, Witch Doctor, Venge, and now the Drow, a hero that picks up Dragonlance and will make Venge and Witch Doctor that much stronger. And Void in the off lane, Drow in the safe lane. Maybe we see someone like a Puck come out for East Chapel Hill. Phantom Assassin, Phantom Assassin gets picked up for the Princeton High Tigers. Could see that going in the mid lane. Uh, as well as the safe lane. Gonna make it... Hard for the Void and the Drow with the mischance on Blur. <clears throat> but maybe they go for someone who picks up a Silver Edge. Maybe you go Jug. Maybe you go Sniper. He does pick up a Shadow Blade occasionally. Could go for the Silver Edge. Sniper's not bad with this Drow aura. They just gotta think. Phantom Assassin is the counter to that who can get into the face of a sniper and ruin his day. So maybe that's not the move you want. Could go TA. TA would be pretty solid with the Drow Aura and Armor Reduction. So... Last bands coming out from both sides. They ban out the OD, which would have been a solid pickup for East Chapel Hill as well as Princeton High, so not a bad ban. Maybe we see a puck ban from Princeton High Tigers. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Here's the razor ban. Not a bad ban from Princeton High either. A static link in a chronosphere. Well, as a plasma field, <clears throat> could make it tough for Princeton High Tigers. Five 
ten seconds remaining. Sniper. Radiant team. So Sniper gets picked up once again by Princeton High. And, uh... It's an interesting lineup. Phantom Assassin's the counter to Sniper, but if you have the counter, why not pick up the Sniper? Uh, hopefully he doesn't get the kind of farm he got in game one, sitting at about 30,000 net worth. East Chapel Hill, they've now got to get a counter to that sniper, someone who can get in his face. I liked the void, it kind of stops them from wanting a sniper, but they picked it up anyway. And they do really have a lot of lockdown to keep that void away from the sniper. The same situation they had in the previous game where, you know, sniper has the ability to sit on the back lines. <clears throat> And while doing so, can take out the side of East Chapel Hill. <clears throat> so Shadow Fiend gets picked up. <clears throat> Hold on. That was my phone. All right, let's switch this up. So here we go. No uh, disconnect this time around. We take a look. I like Platt back on the Rubik. Big boy with the Ogre Magi once again. Smacks with the Phantom Assassin. Kid Papu back on the Sniper. And then Bat Rider played by Cafe. <clears throat> on the other side, East Chapel Hill. Fuzzy Bunny with the Witch Doctor. Fisher Swamp Drow. Rocket F20 with the Void on the mid. Shadow, Fe Shadow Fiend is Gigan. And then finally... You've got the Venge played by Jason. So we take a look. Both teams have set up up top for this top bounty rune. And I'd say this fight kind of favors the Tigers. So maybe East Chapel Hill, they want to abandon ship, go for the bottom bounty rune. And they've sent their drow there already. They've got the aura. They've got the little bit of damage. Shadow Fiend. He's going to benefit from it. So let's see if he does well. Maybe pick up an Ags. Get more souls. Shadow Blade. Be an interesting build for this Shadow Fiend. And of course. Can't play him unless you have the Arcana. There it is. So we are ready to go. We take a look at these lanes. It is going to be the Void in the off lane. Big Boy is going to be here with I Like Platt as well as Smacks once again. And then down low, it is going to be Cafe up against Fisher Swamp. So Jason is here. He doesn't take Magic Missile level 1. And we'll have to eat that sticky napalm. Can't get too committed to something like that. And Fuzzy Bunny, take Maledict level 1. Definitely an interesting uh, lane here for the side of East Chapel Hill. Gigan again. Not on a hero that really does well against Sniper. But another Maledict trying to get a raise to go with it. Oh, get the raise hitting. And just trying to push Kid Papu out of lane. And you know, they're doing an alright job. And he'll salve up. Be okay. To which point, I think Fuzzy Bunny has to back off as well. So we take a look up top. S Max. Smacks. Sorry. Still in my head. Smacks. He's doing all right. Five and three. Coming around. Smoked up. I like Platt. Big boy. They're both here. Forward is both Fuzzy Bunny and Gigan. Go to find themselves a kill. There's the telekinesis hitting his kid Papu. Fuzzy Bunny in a bit of trouble. The raises they do hit, but not enough. So now Gigan, he'll have to back off. They lose Fuzzy Bunny, and first blood goes the way of the Tigers. Not exactly sure what they really meant to accomplish with the Witch Doctor here. It's just not, not something that I think is going to work out. Faye should have an easy time getting level 6. This Drow, by his lonesome, Fisher Swamp. 
That's really not a bad idea. Is, uh, you don't want to give too much to Cafe. So Rocket F20, he's lower level than this Bat Rider, who's already level 3. Rocket F20 only level 2, and he might be in a little bit of trouble. He's got to back off. Now, double damage picked up by Big Boy. Maybe they want to go out on Gigan. They do have Ignite and Bloodlust with the double damage. They've got no stun. Big Boy continuing to move forward. Maybe he's thought better of it and will back off, taking a bit of harass coming out from Gigan. So now, this Drow Fisher Swamp all by himself. 10 and 3, not doing two great smacks. 17 and 5, so top of the last hits denies, top of the net worth. And continuing to push back Rocket F20, who's only found himself, has only found himself four last hits. So there's the gust, but no real follow-up. The frost arrow is only level one. And they continue to give this drow aura. Bottle filled up. And Gigan. We'll continue to use this drow aura and the souls very effectively this early on. He's already hitting four. 118 or 116 so let's see if he can use that to his advantage maybe if they go up top they'll probably start to roll once rocket f20 has himself level six dragon lance probably going to come out on both fisher swamp as well as the shadow d uh, shadow fiend gigan So smoked up is Jason, and they've gone very far forward. And really just not doing much of anything. Gigan will salve up. It'll open up the lane just a little bit for him. Kid Papu, just about level 6. Now coming over from the side is Jason and Fuzzy Bunny. There is a ward to scout this out. So Cafe will just sit back by tower. And again, no trouble for either side. Still just one nothing. five minutes in. I like Platt. Big boy, they've made their way mid. Picking up the bounty rune is Gigan. They have a ward. Knowing he's coming back, he's going to heal himself back to about full. And that Ray is really hitting nothing. I like Platt with the Telekinesis and Fade Bolt, Ignite, Fairy Fire, not enough. And they've brought down the Shadow Fiend for a second kill. So they're trying to find the farm on the side of East Chapel Hill. They've got themselves down by about 1,500 net worth. And it's really just, it's not looking too great for them as they're sitting behind as the early game. And it does favor the PHS Tigers. Especially with this lead. The Drow needs a little bit to come online. They've got the Gust out and they're looking for a kill. There's the Magic Missile. One more shot should do it. And Fisher Swamp, he finally finds himself a kill. And that's not what you want to give up if you're the side of the Tigers. But meanwhile, back mid again. Kid Papu finds another kill on Gigan, who is now already 0 and 2. So 3 to 1. Tigers, they're making easier work of this game thus far. And they'll hit their power spike before East Chapel Hill do. 31 and 5. Drow has a kill. Going to be looking for those treads as well as a Dragon Lance. But still far behind. And Kid Papu, he'll be looking for a Dragon Lance of his own with one kill, two assists. He's doing all right. 
So, so the scan is there from the Dyer, but it really just shows that Gigan is around. There's the Telekinesis out on Fuzzy Bunny as well as the Fire Blast, but Cask is bouncing around. Big Boy in trouble. Might get the kill. They do, and there's the Chronosphere coming out. Jason, you're standing in shrapnel. So Kid Papu gets a double kill. So does Gigan. It's a two-for-two two trade, but with the kills going to Gigan and him not dying, I think it does benefit the Shadow Fiend a little bit more. So, 5-3. to three. It's an alright fight for East Chapel Hill. They get themselves with the net worth turning around just a little bit. They're trying to bring down Cafe, who just back off Fisher Swamp will now just continue to farm. So first, Chronosphere does work, and Stifling Dagger, we take a look over at Smacks. Looks like he's going the Battle Fury build for Phantom Assassin. So Treads finished. Well, as the haste. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Four Gigan. Two are down. Well, we take a look. Fisher Swamp, he's in trouble. He'll be the first to fall. There's the cask bouncing around. Big boy hit by the Maledict. Wave of Terror comes in. They're trying to bring down Cafe. They need one more shot. He's got the haste. He's not going to find it. No raises from Gigan to hit. And there is nothing. Nothing they can do. Gigan, he is not really hitting these raises that well. Blood lust this, blood lust this tier one tower as well as glyphing it, going to make it hard to uh, successfully take down. So Fisher Swamp will get himself a pause. Take a look at the net worth once again. Now 2,000 over 2,000 in favor for the Tigers. So we are ready to go once again. Don't have Chronosphere for another 19 seconds, but they might be looking to wait on it. Possibly go in. Meanwhile, Gigan, he is going back towards mid while Fisher Swamp is here. They could find themselves a kill on Kid Papu. There's the gust, but Phase Boots forward. Kid Papu is all right, and they will be spotted out by these wards. So Smacks, Blink Strike, forward, Venge, you're in a lot of trouble. As that Smacks on that Phantom Assassin will get the kill. So an easy kill, and instead of going for that Battle Fury, goes first item Vanguard. Vanguard Desolator coming out for Smacks on this uh, Phantom Assassin. Going to make this Phantom Assassin very hard to kill in the early goings. And that's really what they want to be able to do. They think they can kill Smax early on. Not too many levels in Blur. But he's got the Vanguard. 1,200 health already. 8 armor. It is going to be a rough ride for East Chapel Hill bringing down Smacks. There's the assassinate out on Fisher Swamp. Not going to finish the job, and a salve will be eaten to stay alive for the time being. My thanks. So coming around the back, here comes PHS. They're looking for Fisher Swamp. Ooh, just not going to get him. Pings are coming out from Fisher Swamp. 
Meanwhile, Fuzzy Bunny, he's going to get hit by that stifling dagger. Let's see if they blink strike in. They won't. And up top, we take a look. There's the Chronosphere out on Cafe. Not enough damage just yet. The lasso hits. Magic Missile. Here comes the Fade Bolt. Chronosphere stolen. Oh, boy. Not going to find anybody with the stolen Chronosphere. Just remember, don't Chrono Rocket. It's not the best ulti to steal. But uh, it's a little bit of lockdown for your sniper to hit in. So Dragonlance almost finished for Sniper. That's going to make it easier for him to hit into the Chronosphere, hit up the Void, and that's going to give him a rough time. Looking to bring down this tier one mid. There's Gigan getting hit with the blink strike coming in. Assassinate is used. Not going to be enough damage. They're going to continue to try and go in. There is the stifling dagger with the ignite and the firefly damage bringing Shadow Fiend down. <clears throat> this game is a little bit easier for the side of the PHS Tigers. East Chapel Hill, they're struggling a little bit. That rider almost at that blink dagger. Dragon Lance finished off for Kid Papu. Arcane Boots is there for the Ogre Magi and Rubik. He's got Arcane Boots of his own on the other side. Fuzzy Bunny, not much to his name, as well as the Venge, who sits only 100 gold up with a pair of boots of his own. It has been a rough game as this Void does have treads ready, but... Not doing too great. So there's the flame break. Going to be perfect throw. Gigan in a bit of trouble. There's the telekinesis. Magic missile comes out on Smacks. So Chronosphere is going to be all right. And it really didn't do too much. Double Chronosphere. The first one being used by I like Platt. The second one being used by Rocket F20. They take out Gigan. They take out Fisher Swamp. And it is 10 to 3 Tigers and very much a game in their favor. So Blink Dagger finished for Cafe. They'll take this tier 2 tower. They might look to just continue to push. They're up by quite a bit. Almost 10,000 gold. So Gigging going to try and line up that ultimate. He gets stunned up. There's the Ignite. Big Boy might be in a little bit of trouble, but the Gust comes out from I Like Platt. And the supports, they take down the carry. And that's a... That's a... I don't want to... I don't want to say it. But an angry buyback. From the Shadow Fiend. Oh boy, here comes the lasso, and wow. Gigan dead again, and he had just bought back. So he's dead 40 seconds, no buyback, and he might be regretting the buyback this time around, as now the Tigers, they can kind of take tier two with ease. And that's it. That is it. They're just going to call GG like that. Wow, so 16 minutes, a quick game too. Wow, so Princeton High Tigers, they uh, take the series 2-0. And uh, that's it from me for now. 2-0 win for Princeton High Tigers. I'm your caster, B Cop 92 
on Twitter at bcop92 and on Twitch, twitch.tv slash gamingforgelt. And uh, that's it for me. I think there's more games coming in from Pytheon. And uh, that's it. Have a good night.